At the request of all of those people who commented yesterday that they would like to see me return to doing some more response videos, I thought perhaps what we could do is break ourselves back in, maybe do one or two a week only, by covering some of the horrific, horrendous, embarrassing cringe that is produced by BBC3. For those who don't know, there is a playlist on my channel where I did a bunch of response videos to the things you should not say to and then a group mentioned. I'm going to go back to those. I will, of course, if anyone has anything they believe I should cover, respond to other videos as well. But with these videos, there is a trend. The trend is always to say something, but never really justify why someone shouldn't say it, only that other people say it. The explanations are weak. To best exemplify this, we're going to cover the things not to say to survivors of FGM, because there are a number of comments within it I noticed that are certainly worth addressing. So, you can't orgasm? What does it look like? Isn't it a bit racist to criticise? Isn't this just, like, male circumcision? To me, all four of these points are actually, in certain contexts, perfectly legitimate things to ask. So let's quickly break each one down and address it. The first one, so you can't orgasm. Certain forms of female genital mutilation remove the ability to properly orgasm, because we can't have anyone experience any pleasure in a simple reproductive process that should just be that and not totally something we should enjoy, because why the feck not? Two, what does it look like? I would assume a mess, with some rather nasty scars, almost as if someone has been mutilated, unnecessarily by someone that needs to be shot. 3. The racism card. While it is prevalent within certain communities that are not white, there is nothing racist about this. FGM is remarkably prevalent around the world. Doesn't matter your race, it happens. And 4. Comparing female genital mutilation with male genital mutilation. While they are not the same thing, they should be treated as such when it comes to the legal element, and it should henceforth be banned. What does it look like? Get out. Maybe I should have a picture tattooed on my forehead. On your vagina? Yes. Just... It's like, why are we so intrigued with what the genitals, what the genitals look entails, like? You know? yeah. Do you find, because you're so open about your story, and it's the same for me, that people think that they can ask you any question? Anything. I'll be honest, I am somewhat surprised no one has answered with, I could draw you a picture of what female genitalia looks like once it has been mutilated, and maybe perhaps instead recommend Google. I'm sure there are some descriptive images there showing the separate stages of mutilating female genitals. Instead though, you've all gotten a bit defensive. Now I get it, mental health is after all quite important and one must not weaken themselves to the point where they end up experiencing any form of PTSD. However, how you handle a situation is not to play victim, not to try and be flippant. Genuinely being curious isn't a crime, nor should it be treated as such to an extent where you think you can be a victim when someone is curious about what happened to you. If you mention it, they're going to ask. We simply don't listen and believe, remember? It's all quite silly, really. I can't believe that anyone that would campaign against FGM would feel so inherently uncomfortable when questioned about their own experience. Because surely their own experience is the reason they're doing it in the first place. It's like my curiosity matters more than your mental health, okay? And your, like, well-being. No one is saying that their curiosity supersedes your uh, experience or your mental health. But... And it is important that I make it quite clear. I am very interested to know in which context someone has brought it up as if their curiosity was more important. You could just say instead, I'm not very comfortable talking about what my genitals look like after what I have experienced. It is not good for my mental health to do so. Granted, some will probably say to you, so you didn't have them mutilated? Because they're not into the whole listen and believe and because some will try and goad you into showing them your, well, what's left of your genitals. However, setting boundaries is very important, and again, I would recommend using imagery from diagram only, not actual images of it happening, because there are some drawings of it. Hell, they're on Wikipedia, I believe. The victimhood in this is quite something. You can't campaign for something if you're unwilling to talk about it. Right, so before we get into this one, I did notice during the segment of all those that answered, 
one person said the one thing that needed to be said to best explain the key and fundamental differences. Others took the more offensive, defensive route. One explained the different types of genital mutilation that women experience. Those were not a correct answer, as it were. So I'm going to play what I believe to be the nearest to a correct answer before giving a correct answer. Yes, I think it's weird to, I can know, cut the healthy tissue of young boys. Mm -hmm. I would never support it, but I think to compare the two in order to make a point mm. doesn't help anybody. That is the correct answer. It was the only correct answer. The next answer given by somebody, by the way, was pure, well, oddly enough, cancer. You'll understand why in a moment. I firmly take the stance that mutilating anyone's genitals is wrong. We have vastly different genitalia, so no one can actually make any comparison at all between men's and women's. Because, oddly enough, we're not the same. Our genitals on the external, women's are internal. Removing whatever it is they remove, for the purposes that are beyond anyone's understanding because it's all absolutely backward, is just stupid. And, like that lady said, essentially counterproductive to any discussion. It's like if someone walked in to like a talk about how diabetes was bad and said, oh, but what about cancer though? Exactly, yeah. You're a genius. Ah, a question born out of ignorance. It will take a few seconds to find. It happens in many countries and faith isn't so important. It happens because it does. Like all genital mutilation. Yes, in the UK we have heard the stories. We have heard the stories of people being taken to Pakistan to have their genitals mutilated or to be married off. We've heard people try and have it happen in this country anyway, within certain Muslim communities. Got to ask though, since this is an ignorant question, how is it something you shouldn't say? Because I haven't said that yet. And yet, when you think about it, none of the questions so far fall into a category where you shouldn't ask. They are all born out of ignorance. Surely, instead of telling people you shouldn't say that, to those that do say it, you would want to, regardless of how much it exhausts you, you would want to tell them, to inform them, so that they are no longer ignorant but enlightened. Playing victim, apparently, is the go-to for retards. Hi, Muslim here. <laughs> Lovely. Oh well, as you are the expert on this, you would surely then be able to answer the question for us since you are either a campaigner or someone that has experienced it, therefore reinforcing the question in the first place. In Egyptian times, Egyptian. Islam wasn't created like until a billion years later or something. Like, come on now. Classic response from somebody who, uh, hmm, didn't really have much to contribute. I would point out that it goes back a little further, before the rise of Islam, that is, to the Merorite civilization. But it can, of course, be traced further depending on region of the world. Let's have a listen to another answer within this segment that intrigued me, because one or two of them were good. They focused on the historical aspect, pointing out that it comes from many different cultures. But one of you went uber defensive, and I think it's funny. Why with the Islamophobia every... Is it every day? Is it every day? Okay, Everything, give them a break. You know? <laughs> it's raining outside. Blame Islam. So let's ignore the fact that it is prevalent in Africa, the Middle East, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Hmm, Indonesia being quite a highly Muslim population as the Middle East. In fact, there is quite a lot in Africa too. Hmm, how is this Islamophobic? Yes, it has been found, for example, in Coptic Christianity, Orthodox Christianity, Catholics in the Sudan, and there are a few Jewish people known to in, in a very small part of Ethiopia but it is prevalent within Islam and known to be prevalent within Islam. A comment I haven't played involved a woman explaining it's not in the Quran and many Imams don't endorse it. That's quite right, but as some will point out, in one hadith there is a story of a woman performing it. There are others, but instead I'm going to concentrate this down to simply prevalent among Islam is not required by any other religion except for the Shafi version of Sunni Islam. There are countries trying to decriminalize FGM, and it is because of their faith that they are doing it. Guess the faith. It is not Islamophobic to say that. Again, how is this not something you should say? Sex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sex. Because that's all. That's, that's all it's yeah. for. Asking such a question would definitely trigger um, huge emotions. It could break. It could break a survivor and set her back. So. 
notice the peanut gallery yet again contributing in such a magnificent way, not at all looking really, really stupid. I do think there is some validity to the comments about setting someone back who has experienced it, depending on where they are in their recovery process, mentally recovery process, obviously. I do think that perhaps a certain level of tact is needed. If you are close friends with someone and have been for a long time and it comes up in conversation, chances are they will be more flippant and be able to discuss it. If you are a stranger and you just go, Oi, I hear your genitals were cut. Can I see them? Can you orgasm? Can you say, oh, daddy? That is incredibly insensitive. I agree. Your parents must hate you. My family did that because they believe it's the best thing they could do for me at that point in time. No one wants their ch child to be um, called names. Not going to lie, the first thing I thought when I heard this question was, who on earth says that? But then I thought about it and realised, yeah, actually that's something I would probably say. But I also understand it could be said sarcastically, which is where I would say it. I wouldn't say it like, yeah, your parents just hate you, because I would understand the climate of the environment they grew up in, knowing that that particular time was a remarkably ignorant one, why it should not happen now. Yet it still does, with a certain air of prevalence through Muslim communities, and I know that's Islamophobic. Statistics don't lie though, motherfucker. People are going to think she's dirty. Mm. No one is going to want to marry her because you can't prove her virginity. Ah, uh, that particular old adage. Proving one's virginity. Because that can't be done. Unless we remove all the genitals. Fucking hell. Thoughts like that need to go the way of the dinosaur. And I am still going to raise this again. How on earth is this something you shouldn't say? I think in certain contexts, it can be said. So I don't understand how it can't be outright, and none of you have explained that either. You're just putting your own personal experience, or what your own faith says about it, onto it, and you're not saying why it shouldn't be said. Many of the mums who are cutting their daughters also were cut, so they feel they have an idea about what is needed. This is exactly the point. A perfect answer to explain why it happened and who was influencing and what was going on. Yes but not explaining why someone shouldn't say it. In fact, if anything, you've now educated the ignorance that may see this video, which is unlikely that any of them will, to understand why it is something that would be considered quite sensitive for a subject, for someone who has experienced it in the first place. But you're not saying why outright, and I think you should. In fact, these videos would be a lot better in this entire series if someone just said, right, you don't ask or you don't say that your parents don't love you because... And this is why. The mental health damage, that's certainly worth addressing. The physical harm they've experienced, certainly worth addressing. Right, so I think we can all concede this is actually a really stupid comment. Yeah, why would anyone go through it? Like children who it happens to the most have a damn choice. There are many things that happen to them that should not. Having their genitals mutilated? Yeah, no. You don't do that. You should not ever do that. But one answer stood out. Let's definitely address that. Patriarchy! Oh, the glory. Because it wasn't long ago, the lady said that mothers were doing it to their own children. But of course, that's a sign of patriarchy. Often you're being forcibly held down and cut. There's no anaesthetic. There's no ability in that. You have no agency to resist. Again, this woman is speaking some sense, instead providing information and fact on it, rather than getting rather angry, which is actually what I cut out of this entire segment. Everyone else instead jumping on this, let's take offence, instead of just trying to be more reasonable, rational, sensible. Apparently, emotions dictate a lot, and I get it. You've experienced something truly horrendous that should never happen to anyone, but it does happen, because there are still people who are absolutely moronic on this planet. Maybe I have to scale up my takeover. Hey look, one that's not aimed at the enlightened population that aren't so fucked hard enough that they would allow their children to be mutilated in such a way that they would be physically maimed for the rest of their lives. Well, let's see how they handle this one. Because there are going to be those that think you've betrayed your community and that's, that's bad, we can't have a grass. Hmm. Or those that are impure and we can't find out if they're virgins. Because again, that totally matters as well. Those activists who did start this movement, um, they've had some really horrible backlashes. 
After deleting two redundant comments, I got to this part. And I would say that, yes, they did. Because people don't like change. And that is what those people were trying to implement. A much-needed change. I'm waiting for the day, and I really want it to happen, where that much-needed change also happens to what is called male circumcision, but is in fact male genital mutilation. Um, why do you talk about it? I didn't want to go on living in a world where FGM happened. Being a medical student, like being on the wards and speaking to doctors, and they actually come and tell me, oh yeah, we had cases of FGM today. I'm going to kind of stop the video where it is, because this question isn't something you shouldn't say. At all, in fact, if anything, this is the one thing you should say. BBC, you are getting remarkably lax on this. None of the questions in hindsight were anything you shouldn't say. In fact, the only thing I think that should be said in return to all of this is, let me get up my notebook here, uh, defund the BBC. Perfect. If you, the lovely viewer, hello, would like to see me do more of these videos in the future, please let me know in the comments below. As a final thing, tonight I'm going to be streaming a political recap over on the Moiski Live channel with Trups LP, 9.30pm GMT. Link to that channel down below. No doubt the European elections, Theresa May more than likely resigning, will be my focal point. So if I don't see you over there, I hope you have a lovely day and weekend, and thank you all for listening.